Uh, yeah. 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 Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a hard act to follow. Yeah. I should have come first. <laughs> Everybody always pushes me back. Yeah, dear, I'm here. Hello. Blessing Hi, Grindel. Everyone. Yeah. Hello. And I have a lot of work to do in Israel still. Changes every day in the earth and the way people are, are reacting to many things. The energies are surprisingly strange at this time. The, uh, the solar flares, does everybody know about solar flares? Yes. Yeah. Do you know that you're in the midst of them right now? Yes. yes. Do you know that they're affecting the attitudes and emotions of people on the earth? Yes. Um, be aware that things outside of your world, energies that are coming in, are affecting how you feel, uh, your daily routines, your bodily functions even sometimes. Some of you. I don't, let's not talk about that too much, okay? All right. Um, but yeah. There's some extreme changes that were not foreseen. The mind calendar that someone mentioned, I was listening in, does not even mention the major changes that are coming uh, or has come within the last few weeks. So I'm not going into that. But there's, I think that you're noticing a change worldwide in attitudes and activities and yeah and it's if you're watching it can look sort of silly and sort of tragic and sort of weird but it is happening so that doesn't mean you have to move to the other side of the world or you have to uh store up food or anything because when things Things happen you're not going to be prepared enough to do anything about it but believe me many of you are protected and so you will come through it because you need to you're here for a reason when people are here for a reason God protects them God knows who you are so don't worry you might want to do a little bit more introspection and prayer, but you are protected. I'm not saying it'll be easy, but I do say you will be protected because you have a reason for being here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is there any questions? I hope not. You guys have stupid questions usually. I, hey, I do. have to Hi, Grindel. Who's first? Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. yeah, what do you okay. want? I want to Okay, find I had. Oh, one I'm at sorry, a time. Grindel. One at a time, one at a time. Okay, okay, here's the question. Go in alphabetical order or something. I don't know. Hi, ce Celebrity Grindel. I never talked to you, yeah. so that's, that's the first time. My name is Lila Manjari, and I have uh -huh. a. I hope I don't have a too stupid question. So no, I, have to... uh, I was just making fun of humans. Go oh, ahead. No, no, no. That's that's it's fine with me. I do have a reptilian humor, so I do understand you completely. Ah, go ahead. Okay. So I do have I have reptilian children. Therefore, yeah. I can under, therefore I can understand you better probably. So the name is Roha and Arbri. I you have like, your hands full with reptilian children, but go ahead. I know. So <laughs> I would like, <laughs> I would like to know: Do you have? Uh, could you tell me what uh, species they are? 
uh, from and the yeah. message from the parents because the children are very small, two and three years old. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yes. Hold so, on. Okay, thank you. I'll have to connect with them to get a message, but go ahead Please. and continue. So, mes um, uh, message, okay, you talk. Well, one of them is Zespot, which is my species. The other is Elias Shandai Zendi, which is a species that is very prominent around the solar, your solar system right now. So, uh, they're both friendly species. Uh, well, mine is considered neutral, but we're moving toward the friendly. Yeah, well, sort of friendly, I guess. But um, the Elias Shondai Zendi is considered mo more friendly than us, even. And so they are. Uh, so your children are both in, I would say, positive uh, species. And, right. Do the they parents have a are the parents are very loving. I know the parents of the Zespod people. Your your Zespod child. Yeah. I don't remember the names though. Sorry, I don't remember kids' names. I'm not a real kid person. Not problem. So don't I mean they're okay. I, I hey I had some of my own, so I but you know they're painting the uh the tail, if you want to call that, or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, they can be challenging. So I understand. So but I do love uh, them. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. Right. How long, did it, how long do reptilians live? I mean, it the depends. species. Our In species general. lives. Yes, our species lives. Um, it's. Now, I have to qualify this a little bit because in human years, sometimes I, I have a trouble uh, calculating things, but I've done this uh, several times. And the first time I calculated it was like 250 years. The second time I calculated it was like uh, 280 years. So um, around that era. 300 years. All right. Almost, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but so you're, all right, your par the parents of the the Zespods that I will call them Zespods is uh, what do you want to know? Their names? Well, my just if you if you connect it to the parents, just how the children are doing, are they healthy, are they fine? Just yeah, general. They're great. The kids are doing great. Okay. They're very happy with them. Very, very happy. Uh -huh. Do they do they know about me? Yeah, of course they do. Every every hybrid child knows who their human parent is. Everyone is told. It is part of the rules. Okay, if they are my children, what do they have a similarity with me? Do they have a the look, some look from yeah. the human? They have a somewhat they have some human features but they have more uh reptilian features since uh two of the parents were reptilian and only your dna was introduced but they have a more human kind of attitude a brain set a little bit more kind and thoughtful a little bit less growly and agitated they don't get as agitated as easily. Wonderful. That is a, that's uh, However, a, whatever. You, uh, your one kid does sort of get a little bit more agitated than the other one. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of aggressive. Well, yeah. I, I will have to come <laughs> over then one day. <laughs> yeah, you'll talk to him. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you want? Who's next? Hi, Crystal. Me. It's Wendy. Wendy. Oh. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming and explaining what's going on in on the other side of the earth. 
Yeah, they, um, I understand that they want to extract the gold and they recently just uh, took one of the sleeping giants from that area. Is yeah. there any way at all that, that uh, communication of any other giants that are a little bit more positive on that side of the earth can help to shift things to make it more uh, well, more stable and more balanced because it's that side of the earth is so off balance. The earth is off balance because they are messing with things they shouldn't be messing with. <clears throat> and that is something that may not be able to be corrected so easily. And about your sleeping giants, I can't tell you where they are because if I mention that, they'll go and get them right away. So I just won't mention that. But they're protected no, now. Since one was taken, the rest are under yeah. a heavy guard. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way that we can um, help with the influence in making things more positive, I'm saying? Yeah, we do everything we can to make things more positive. But um, we do everything we can. Believe it. Believe it. But there are those that will try to knock you down and change that positive negativity into negativity so we're doing all we can but the situation is uh this let me just put it in very very simple terms if we don't get this thing straightened out pretty soon uh a lot of people are going to suffer so we want to make sure we get this under control as quickly as possible but i can't even explain what it is to you i understand but I want it's against uh, we're not allowed to tell you what it exactly is happening it's not okay. an attack it's not anything like that but your own people are screwy and have done something that is uh, beyond belief so that is what you must know it is from your own people and so it ties our hands to some degree because we are not allowed to uh, interfere in a material way with what's going on. So we have to work outside of the atmosphere in some ways to help with this situation that your people have put you in. Yeah, I understand. Oh, it's crazy. And the machine world is also being used inappropriately in, in helping them to deal with this and helping them go through with their uh, on positive plans. Is there any way at all you could have sanctions against the machine god? There is nothing we can do when your people are in charge of the machines that are doing what they're doing. Um we cannot step in and change anything that you are doing to yourselves and this is something on that level you are your people your leaders your scientists whatever you want to freaking call them are doing this to themselves and so we cannot step in so you to save you because you are doing it to yourself. It's not like a seismic event or, or a tsunami or something like that. This is something you're doing to yourself and you have to save yourself. Understood, thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's all I can really tell you about that, but I tell you more than anybody else because I'm a blabbermouth and nobody can shut me up. <laughs> Greetings and blessings, sure. I mean, um, <laughs> I mean, Christine, Grindel, how's it going, babe? I am doing very well. Um, good, good, good. You know what I um, meant to ask you, and it slipped my mind, was um, is it possible, since everything is energy, yeah, for us to um, focus either with a reke, um, um crystal grids or um, through yeah. love and whatever, if we can focus all of this on the problem spot, such as... Um, yeah. You have to, you actually do have an opportunity as a group to focus your attention 
on changing the situation, even though you don't know what it is, and it's top secret and all that bull malarkey. Uh, but you you can send energy to uh, positivity and making the world a better place and changing the outcomes and all these things. Now, this has changed the f your future in some ways that cannot be calculated at this time. So that's why it has to be under get under control really quickly. <laughs> you can feel the change. You many people have already felt the energy change of it, and so send out your vortexes, your energy, your whatever it is that you can send, and send it in great amounts, and continue to send it day and night. That's how important this is. Okay, are you? I'm speaking of the violence in the different, um, on the different continents like uh, Israel, Palestine, or yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, I think we just added another one about worrying about these beings that are being um, messed around with our scientists, yeah. Um, so, um, I'll be thinking about them too. Thank you very much, Grindel. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now they're telling me that I have to shut up. Wait. Wait. Well, hey, Cher, how's it going? Do you have uh, time for one more? Of course, but I have to be careful what I say. Of course. Otherwise, they're going to tie my beak shut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, David Waller uh, says hi. I'm chatting with him. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Hey. Do you have any thoughts about the planetary body that uh, people are seeing next to the sun? The planetary body next to the sun is something that your people have are responsible for. That's all I can tell you. Nah, too much? All right, sorry. <laughs> um, and I only want to know if there's something that we should uh, talk about yeah there's lots of things we should talk about but they're gonna kick me my ass if i do no i mean in a private uh, conversation yeah yeah i know we'll we'll talk yes yeah Good. and yeah i'm also doing a couple of things here so uh, we will talk about it and i want yeah. to thank you for everything yeah Everything, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. There was right. also Ellie wanted to speak. Ellie. Uh, hey, Grindel, baby, how are you? You have What's an up, age. doll face? <laughs> you have an age. Yeah, it looks like a baby doll face on this picture. It is. It is. It is. Ah, oh, cute. Cute. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted to speak about the solar flares and uh, can they yeah. also affect us in a positive way? Not only make us go crazy at times? Yeah, listen to me carefully. Energy of all kinds is hitting your planet. You can change it into very positive energy. When it comes in, it's actually neutral in some ways. It's just scientific energy, some of it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like bad or good. It may cause this or that, but it's not intended to be negative or positive. You can put your own uh, spin on that energy as it comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. That's very good. Very yes. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So, yes, use the energy in a positive way as it's coming in. Don't let it be, don't turn it negative. I'm sure none of you will do that. But it is natural energy. It is natural, and you can make it positive or negative if you want. But it does affect the earth in somewhat of a negative way. But if you look at it, it's just being itself. And it's affecting the earth the way it would affect the earth in a natural state. Do you understand that? 
Yes, actually, we will accept it, accept it as neutral, and we know yeah. we can multiply it either in one direction or another. It depends on our choice. Okay, good. Yes, good. yes. Good. So when you feel this energy, if it comes to you in a way that is not pleasant, try to make it into a pleasant, because it depends on how you're feeling at the time when you exactly. experience it, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Kisses and love. <laughs> yeah. I know you love it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Reptilian nibbles to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That that was from me. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do the kissing thing like you do. Yeah. It's not. Not the same, no, no. It's a more Eskimo like, yeah. You know, rub rub noses or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. No tongue. No tongue. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, you can bite it off. You can bite it no, off. No, more teeth than tongue, actually. So, On the you know, tail. The good cleaning is necessary. <laughs> ah, so there you go. All right. Did you have a question? Yeah, right. There's someone here with a question in the room. Oh, thank you for making me laugh. Oh. Uh, Lacerta, she's a reptilian female. What species is she with? Lacerta is a Zespot. A Zespot. Yes. Lacerta is speaking to Earth now. Uh, more Zespods are now starting to speak to Earth. I am not the only one in Sparkle started speaking to earth and now lacerta is speaking to earth that is a female zest point i'm the only male so far so yay me but um <coughs> there's a couple female reptilians from my planet from my species i should say that are are talking to humanity now very good yeah what other questions are there? What about your sex life? Could you tell us something? Oh yeah, hot. <laughs> but um, are you not, well, what do you are you not old? old? Yeah. <laughs> Gee, you yeah, I'd have to take a film of it probably. Okay. Yes. So like uh, rolling around in the water sort of thing, you know. <laughs> not a picnic lunch kind of thing, no. Uh, a know, lot of room is needed. Humans, humans love things like that. You could make billions. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Oh, please. Oh. <laughs> um, I can't even describe to you in human language what making love is like with us because it's a lot of movement. A lot more... Uh, well, you humans have a lot of movement, some of you, not all of you, I, I, I don't know. I guess missionaries don't have that much movement. But anyway, um, but yes. We got, uh, we um, humans, we humans, we got more like a slapping like a penguins. What was that? Slapping like the penguins. Oh, penguin. Oh, yeah. They're That's not what fun I would describe. But anyway, That's what I would describe. Um, but yeah, ours is a lot of movement, a lot of rolling. Uh, there's a lot of rolling back and forth involved. Uh, what else can I tell you? <laughs> it's not something I usually talk about. It's been a while for me. Uh, I haven't done that for quite a while. Uh, but... It was fun at one time, yeah. So, so you did uh, like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting older now. So, yeah. After you change yeah. your body, uh, after you leave your body, would you, is you uh, wish to become reptilians again or you would like to be somebody else? Would I like to be something other than reptilian? Yes, after you leave the, this body. I don't know. I'd have to look and see what's out there. All right. Uh, 
I, you know what? There is that tree species that looks pretty cool. And they, they have a pretty interesting life. There's this tree species. They're pretty big. They're very large trees, but they, they, have, they can move all their limbs. They can use them like arms. And, and they have different qualities that uh, many species don't have. That, I would like to see what it's like to be one of them. And they do speak, and they have telepathy, and they <coughs> have uh, mental acuities that are really quite good. You're speaking for the fourth, fourth density, mm -hmm. in fourth dimension, yeah? Yeah, they're in fourth density, yes. Uh, yeah. pass, pass them our invitation to speak one day. Yeah, yo, talk to a tree. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be happy to. Maybe. We'll see. You'd have to ask for them. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Are you done with me for now? Yeah. You're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, well, when you were, I have a question if nobody has. When you were in the human body, in your time on this yeah. planet did, did you feel attraction to human women not really I didn't really uh, feel much sexuality the body that I took over was um, yeah he it was male and it was in the military and stuff and and yes he did have a some of a sexual drive but and there was some interaction for cultural purposes <laughs> but um yes it was it was entertaining but it wasn't something that i really enjoyed that much i enjoyed more of the interaction i enjoyed um of uh, the leadership i enjoyed learning different things but yes there was a sexual aspect to my being there but it wasn't the main purpose I was there and so I kept it under perspective and I knew that it could yeah you know, it felt good yeah and I knew that that could become a sort of a addiction of sorts if I would let it but I didn't want that I needed to stay focused the other thing was drinking uh, the drinking I could drink everything they had there and not get too drunk so uh that was one thing i used to drink my soldiers under the table as it was called and no one could out drink me because it didn't affect me the same way because my dna in in the human body was not the same sort of so um i was like and I, I actually enjoyed watching them change personalities in front of me. It was like hilarious. So that was one thing that I thought was fun. <laughs> you're, maybe you're I too. maybe I shouldn't have been that cruel at times, but it was fun to watch the changes because <clears throat> I didn't you change, too. so I was able to have a perspective that they couldn't have. <laughs> Did you attract people the way you do here in the webinars? Not really. They thought I was an asshole. I got called that quite a bit. Behind my back, of course. Otherwise, they'd be, I'd, they'd be doing 50 push-ups. Because I made it to uh, some leadership positions in the Army. I was a born leader there. So I made it to staff sergeant, like no, like real quickly, and then sergeant, and then I, I didn't want to go any higher than that. So, so I stayed there. I was offered higher positions, but um, a higher position, I should say, one higher. But uh, I didn't take it because uh, I knew that my time was almost up, and um, and I wanted to stay closer to the uh the the uh, training elements 
Why are yeah. you not attracted? Why are you not attracted to take human body in next life and move on to Tara heart to higher dimension? Well, the human body is very frail compared to mine, and it gets a lot more illnesses. And uh, watching them get drunk under uh, so bad and being sick and everything, I didn't really. That didn't really make me attracted to being a human in my next life. Let's put it that way. So, but maybe one day I will, I will do that again, but uh, no, I don't think my next life will be human, no. But you, you see, guys now are you can... too frail. You guys well, are too well, frail. well, well, just listen. Now, yeah. you can underst now you can understand when we take this weak body, that is actually not a sign of weakness, but tremendous strength that we put us in this vulnerable situation and still oh, has, yeah, so we cannot really say the reptilian cannot laugh about us how weak we are because we are actually not. Let me borrow a phrase from the late 60s. More Please. power to you, baby. <laughs> yes, so you put yourself in that position, that's good. I understand it, and it is honorable and admirable, and I will do it sometime again in the distant future, probably, but not right now. <laughs> but I do admire the humans. That's why I'm here. I, I wouldn't be talking to yes. you if I didn't, I didn't respect I and admire you. I love many of you, uh, and many of you are close to my little scaly heart. So. Yes, when you when you became a tree and we are still alive, please tell us so we can come all together and hug you, big Very tree, good. all of us. Yes, <laughs> I will. Well, okay, yeah, we'll see if in that's the, possible. Yes. In the astral, in the astral, yeah. in, <laughs> in the, the astral, yes. in the tree dimension. <laughs> yes. All right then. Very good. I, Quindle. Yeah, good. yeah. Yes. Hey, how how are you? Hello. Um, <laughs> is there is there any gossip you're allowed to tell us? I already gave you so much gossip that I'll probably get uh, kicked in the butt for it later. Okay. About the the government meetings still going ahead. They're what? You're sort of soft. Say that again. Is the government meeting still going ahead? Is the government still going ahead? Meetings. Oh, yes. On the 31st of May, that's when the first day of meeting is. And that will last for five days. I usually it lasts longer. They usually end up doing an entire week, but they've the first they used to schedule it for three days, then they scheduled it for four days. Now it's five days, so it's getting longer all the time. They have more things to discuss, and there's more countries involved. So, and more people want to speak, more humans want to talk. So they are giving more people opportunity to speak. But last time. I will tell you, there were like four people speaking about site to site, and there was at least three more that wanted to speak on that, and they shut down those talks there. They let three or four speak, and they wouldn't let the rest of them talk about it because they were like, we're not ready, we're not there yet. So uh, there were certain things about um, medications and stuff. They There was a lot of people wanting to talk about that too, about all the different uh, things that they had for cures for diseases, and they shut them down a little bit too. So not everyone got to talk at the last meeting. So they are making a um, they're making a, a resolution or a bringing in the thought that more people should be able to speak if they want to, and they shouldn't be shut down by the governments. So I don't know if that's going to fly, but we'll see. Yeah. 
Yeah. You have any more questions? Yeah, is President I Trump going to go? Yeah. They're starting to call him Trumpet. Because all he does is trumpet things. He's full of Trump. He just full of proclamations and information. Uh, but yes, exactly. he's going to be there supposedly. Yes. Good. Let's hear what he trumpets it about then. Yes, I. He's the last meeting. He was there also, for as an introductory. But he only stayed one day. He did not really care for that kind of meeting. He was a little <laughs> freaked out by it. Uh, but this time he's probably a little more prepared. So we'll see what he has to, to say. And, and actually, the whole world is waiting to hear what he has to say. They are. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They are waiting. I'm serious. Uh, some of the countries are very afraid of him because he knows how to handle money, and they're afraid that he'll get their hands on theirs. <laughs> All right, go, go ahead. I'm just wondering um, what he's going to do about the, um, the drugs and... Um that the cartel <laughs> no. <laughs> no what drugs are you talking about well i was thinking about all the drug companies um that oh, uh, yeah. because that's he, why your humanity does not want all these cures to come out right. it would destroy the economy for sure pharmaceuticals <laughs> doctors uh surgeries hospitals you would lose great great amounts of employment and so they said no it's not possible to do that now well we're but already yeah yeah because they're they're interested in the keeping the people employed but also the big profits that they're making from people's diseases is enormous yes and even other things they charge like an arm and a leg for a Viagra. Jeez. Um, <laughs> you know, they will pay it. And now, I mean, how much does it cost to make one of those things? Probably a, a nickel. And they're selling them for like uh, 20 bucks or 30 bucks each or more. Oh, they make a fortune. Yeah, yeah. Some medications, thousands and thousands of dollars. The insurance brings it down to three dollars, affordable maybe, but they're charging your insurance company two thousand dollars for something that you're paying three dollars at the a checkout for. Not me. It's a, it's a racket. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Grindel. Yeah. You're welcome. Hi, yeah. Grindel. It's Wendy again. Who I Wendy. Yeah. Um, since you said you were part of military, military. Military was what I was interested in on your planet and was my experience and was something that I learned a great deal about humanity as I was doing it. Because of course you have weekend passes and a time where you can go out into the world and see things. And I didn't always have to wear the uniform, but I, uh, I learned quite a bit about humanity by being there for the time I was there. I was there like eight years and in the, well, no, actually it was nine, nine years in the military. <clears throat> so some of the do you have bloodlines that still exist at this time in the military from way past when we were yeah the bloodline that I was part of yes when I left that body he went on to have a family and all that but it's not my bloodline it's a human bloodline so 
I was a walk-in, as you call it. And um, he was agreeable to it, but he is sworn to secrecy. Actually, I think he just passed not long ago. Uh, okay, thank you for your time, Grindel. And I love you for who you are, Grindel. You're a wonderful being. Thank you. Yeah, I should have my own stand-up. I should do my own stand-up routine. I could kill. <laughs> Not literally. No, the only trouble is, in your stand-up, you'd be giving away so many secrets. You yeah, might... well. <laughs> you have to make some sacrifices. But I guess I shouldn't. But, you know, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. All right. I won't say that. Okay. I'll be good. I'll be good. I haven't been good so far, but I will be good now. You say that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, Who's in the spotlight? You or me? <laughs> <laughs> I never asked you, how, how long do you leave your species? 200 years? Uh, what would you say? How long do you live? What lifetime span? Oh, 250 to 280 years human time. Yeah, but in the 4D reality, time is passing very differently than ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our years are different than your years. We have um, <clears throat> longer years than you have. So in our span, it's not that long. In human years, it's that long. <clears throat> but if you go by our years, we live like uh, maybe 200. We, yeah, 200 years. Yeah. I'm getting confused. Back and forth. Um, I, I want to ask, uh, in the 4D uh, on Earth, which has been already created, uh, is the geographic... You're breaking up, honey. I can't hear you. The fourth dimension on Earth has already been created. Yeah. My my question is, is the geographical, the, the geographical chart the same as we see it? The mountains and the, yeah. the rivers? Mm -hmm. only, only the plants? But in the fourth dimension, you will see it differently. You will see... The um, it will be a very similar terrain as what you're used to in the third dimension, but there is another whole topography in the fourth dimension. Now, some things will overlap, but you do not see that in the third dimension, and you will not see the overlap from the fourth dimension either. So, but there is a whole other uh, dimension on top of this one and another dimension on top of that, because that, that's the way it is. It's just like all the chakras are in the, in the root. All the dimensions are in one place on top of each other, but you can't see them until you're in them. And therefore, space is even, has even more and greater uh, beings and sensibilities than you can possibly imagine. Okay, good. Good to know. Yeah. All right. Well, are you tired of me yet? No. Oh, well, thanks. Could I have one question, Grindel? Very good. What do you got? <laughs> um, I had a, when I was in a meditation and I had a realization in a in an idea of myself as one as the only one that i experience uh, i had a realization of in a sense time the time of course doesn't exist in a linear idea that humans yeah. have belief and everything was basically instant without any loading time so to speak what i believed in in the moment I was actually experiencing that moment. So when I was changing the inside, 
the outside automatically had that belief structure. So in a sense of what we were speaking about before, that yeah. people, human on this planet are doing crazy stuff against whatever themselves and stuff like that. That would yeah. mean somewhere inside of the feeling that I have, I'm working against myself in that one that I am. So I, as one, having the outcomes of that reality that we are experiencing in this world is that uh, okay what you did was this let me break it down to something very simple you moved into your energy reality do you understand what I'm saying your energy reality is endless everything is made of energy and God is the original energy and you moved into the uh, reality of oneness with the universe and the energy that's there and so you could see things in a greater way than you could have possibly imagined and, and it felt very different didn't it <clears throat> it felt very real and very different yes it, yes it was real because you are made of energy everything is made of energy but we cannot define that in our belief systems in some ways because we don't experience it as energy. But when you break yourself down and bring yourself to your lowest common denominator, you are pure energy. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And that is what, in some ways, you are experiencing but you were also not only experiencing that, but you were experiencing the layers of thought process that are part of all of, e of all eternity. Do you understand what I'm saying? I feel you. I un understand what the feeling is. I, I feel you. Is that close to what, am I explaining it properly? Yes, my question in that sense of energy that I am. Yes. In my belief of what is, am yes. I ex experience exactly that what I am believing until I change my belief or if I'm influenced from, from another energy, so to speak, which is just another energy of myself, changing myself as All the right. process of God hiring hiring up All right, I'm your belief systems come from a million or two million or ten million years ago up to this point and what you believe now is the congo uh, is all those belief systems put together and so you are able to change your belief if you wish but remember this you and your belief system are still only a perception of the full entire entity that you are. So your belief system may change in the future to be even greater than it is now. <coughs> Does that make sense to you? Yeah, thank you. But Thank you, you are a great being and you have great perception and your belief system is always growing. Do you know what the major thing that changes a belief system is? Experience. Now you've had that experience of being energy. It's changed your belief system once again to something even greater and more um, all-encompassing. And one quick yeah. last question. Um, yeah. As for a long time, I've been feeling uh, a lot of energy in my solar plexus, and it's still very close to me, this energy. Yes. And it makes my heart beat very fast and very quickly and very often. I, I, I am aware that this is 
sort of happening to me. Yes. Um, will this continue? Right. Yes, I can. You want to know what's going on? Yeah. All right. Let me tell you that in your third dimension, um, it's as you move up the levels of evolution, you experience your dimension in the way that uh, your society has set it up in the sense that society is in a solar plexus mentality meaning that in the solar plexus is where your drive is is where your uh, energy is for life at this time if you look the root is survival and and uh and grounding and things of that nature and then the sacral is the creative the me the mentally understanding creativity and the creative awareness that you have and and the building of your world through a creative thought process and the solar plexus is the planning of your world the planning of all things and that's where your civilization is as a whole in a solar plexus mentality where anger and drive and things of this nature are very prominent you are evolving to a heart uh, understanding and that is why you are feeling the way you are feeling do you understand that yeah you are evolving and that is why you are feeling that your solar plexus and your heart are are joined in some way humanity is moving into the heart when they reach telepathy they'll be more into a heart sensation they'll be more in a human feel for one another a human desire to help one another or and be more calm about what is all around and how to be more civil and so you are moving there ahead of schedule in some ways does that make sense to you yeah it makes sense to me. very good there's so much more i could tell you but we only have limited time and i'm only one reptilian and i'm very so i'm, I'm very thankful for that. i understand you and you are moving in a very great uh, emotional way in a in a very evolutionary way to your next level already thank you thank you thank you I love you so much and thank You're you all bye-bye have a wonderful day thanks Grindel hey are you ready for somebody else yet no. yes all right there's somebody, one more person that has a quick message, I think. I'm not sure. They're saying, you didn't give me much time. <laughs> hey, I have a big mouth. What can I say? All right. I will let them in. Hold on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I've worked out the tail detail, so it doesn't hurt as much. So that's good. Just to let you know, not that you care. Right? Yeah. We do care. I care. No, thank you. I'll send you a Valentine next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <coughs>